Hi there, my name is Roberto Blake and today in Adobe Photoshop I'm going to be showing you how to create this image using basic lighting and masking techniques. So let's get started. Now for the purposes of time uh, this is all going to be done rather quickly using some fast techniques rather than some more refined ones. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do is create a new document and we're going to extract our model from our background and place it within that new document. To extract our model, we're going to be using a combination of the magic wand tool and uh, layer masking. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just quickly select our model with the quick mask tool and just get these uh, background pieces here and a little bit of this. And again, this isn't going to be all very precise because we're uh, working with a time constraint. And you'll find that this actually works rather well with a high contrast image. So you see, we just do that. We um, click Alt and we click our layer mask, drag this over, resize it to fit our canvas, and we'll be good to go. Now, more traditionally, when you're not pressed for time, you're going to want to go ahead and use the pen tool and masking to extract your models. But uh, when we got to do things very quickly, uh, this does work pretty well, and we do need to clean up some edges here. And a quick trick for remembering when you have to uh, use a black and white brush to um, clean that up is just remember that um, black uh, conceals and white reveals. That's just um, a mnemonic device that I use to remember that. I'm going to go ahead and apply a subtle background here. And with this screencast, um, it's not showing the gradient in the most flattering light, uh, but you get the general idea from the uh, final image that we used earlier. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, clean up some of that layer mask now. We're not going to get all of it. Uh, we can clean it up at the very end here uh, when we're ready. And this is just to give you a basic idea of setting up for this composition. And this is the first crucial part of this that we're doing. And you know, let's just go ahead and extract in the model and get this layer masking out of the way. And just really quickly, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at our brushes palette just to make sure that we have the pressure sensitivity set up right because I'm using a wake up tablet here and that's going to be very important later so you always want to double check that. Uh, now selecting our model image uh, we're going to just go ahead and label that. We're going to use the shortcut control J to uh, make two duplicates here because we're going to create um, our tonal adjustment layers. One of them is going to be using an overlay blend mode with some specific settings that we're going to get to in a minute and the other is going to be for our unsharp mask. Just real quickly, um, what I'm getting ready to do here is I'm going to set up the um, overlay layer, which is going to be a um, black and white image adjustment layer. And we're going to use a red filter for this one uh, just to really give this some really interesting contrast and make it pop. And then I'm just going to modify my settings here to custom. Just pull these back. And then we're going to apply overlay blend mode and adjust our opacity to about 60%. You can just play with these settings, but you'll see what a huge difference it makes and how much the image pops. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, our um, unsharp mask here. Uh, now traditionally, I do a lot more retouching involved with this. I mess with the curves, the levels. Um, I go back with a healing brush and I take care of any blemishes and I do um, a gaussian blur to the skin. Uh, things like that, but just for the purposes of time here, we're going to focus on tonal adjustment and sharpening, and I want you to take a good look at these settings here, and I want you to use these, uh, or you can just play with them, but these work really well for me most of the time, and you see that makes a big difference in our image. That's really sharp, it's clean, it's crisp. So, we have that now. With that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and group our model layers together, keep this uh, whole thing organized, and then we're going to set up a new layer to move on to using the pen tool in part two.